1886, a competition was announced in Paris. The winner would get the right to design and build the centerpiece for the World's Fair of 1889. The company of Gustave Eiffel proposed a project that won among 107 others. The first project of the architects from Eiffel's company was a tower with stonework pedestals, monumental arches between the columns, halls with glass walls on each level, the top shaped like a bulb, and plenty of ornaments. That project was too complicated, so they changed it only leaving the arches at the bottom. It took a record 5 months to finish the foundation, and another 21 to put together the 18,000 metal pieces on top. You can still see it and count them all when you visit Paris. The Eiffel Tower looks revolutionary where it stands even today. But back in the late 19th century, it was a real sensation, for which a lot of people criticized it. Famous writers called it a tragic street lamp, a half-built factory pipe, and a giant skeleton. Now, they weren't too wrong. The tower really has something in common with a human skeleton. It was inspired by a thigh bone. When they were just beginning to work on the project, Eiffel's team faced a serious problem. They had to make the tower strong enough to withstand the elements, but at the same time, it had to be about as light as air. If they had made one mistake, the tallest construction in the world at that time would have collapsed under its own weight, gravity, or a strong wind. And they had to work with iron, which was a revolutionary new building material back then. Around the same time, Anatomist Hermann von Meyer was researching the thigh bone, or femur. It's the longest and strongest bone in the human body. Bones are strong and solid on the outside, and spongy on the inside, the same as bamboo. It grows so tall because it's a hollow tube made of smaller tubes that are made of even smaller ones. The bone, just like bamboo, takes the load it carries because of the structures inside it. They're bone fibers arranged in a crisscross pattern. A Swiss engineer, Carl Kuhlmann, developed that concept and created a crane where patterns like in the thigh bone were used exactly where support was needed most. Gustav Eiffel used that idea and decided to build his tower using crisscross patterns of studs and braces to support the construction. He did some major math and designed it so that high winds going directly to the strongest part, the four legs and the flares going outwards at the base of the tower looked like the femur upside down. The plan worked out piece by piece, and the construction was finished on March 31, 1889. A lot has changed since then in science and architecture, but nature still inspired cool new inventions and technologies. This is called biomimicry. For instance, the first high-speed rail in the world, the Shinkansen running since 1964, was also inspired by nature. When the train was getting out of the tunnel at the speed of 185 miles per hour, it produced a sonic boom. That noise woke up people in nearby cities and scared wild animals. A group of engineers was working to solve this issue. One of them, who was also a bird watcher, suggested making the train more like a kingfisher. That bird has a long pointed beak that helps it dive in the water with almost no splashes when it's hunting. They reshaped the front of the train, giving it a sort of beak and solved the noise problem. The new shape also helped save energy consumption because it was more aerodynamic and made the train 10% faster. The inventor of Velcro was inspired by his own dog. He wanted to find out why burrs stick to its fur so easily and notice tiny hook-shaped spikes on them under a microscope. They catch onto different materials with loops like fur and fabric. Georges de Mistral recreated that technology and started his own company back in 1959. Ever since, the fastening system of nylon loops attaching to tiny spikes has been used for many different purposes. Sharks are some of the best swimmers in the world. They are so fast thanks to their body shape and also a special kind of skin covered in small teeth and not scales. Scientists created a film based on shark secret technology. When a ship is covered in it, little marine creatures can't stay attached to it, and so the vessel can travel faster and save fuel. Swimmers wearing swimsuits made of shark-inspired material also become much faster. They also bite harder. Mm, Not really. Brightly colored butterflies and peacocks inspired an energy-saving technology for phone displays. 
these creatures have little structures on their wings and feathers. When white light shines on them, they reflect different colors at different speeds because the surface isn't uniform. In screens based on this idea, the colors also come from reflection. The screen doesn't produce them and saves energy this way. The colors are still bright and vivid, so it's a win-win. The African Namib desert beetle is a pro at collecting water. It transforms fog into droplets of water in little bumps on its shell. Then it sends the water directly to its head for drinking. MIT scientists and engineers created a similar structure out of glass and plastic. It can be used for cooling devices and to safely clean up toxic spills. Now, whales are some of the largest creatures on the planet. And at the same time, they're great swimmers, divers, and jumpers. Their secret is bump protrusions on the fins that are pretty much like wings. They control the water flow to help the whale make different maneuvers. Scientists decided to use this idea for wind turbines. Tests have shown these whale-inspired turbines are more stable, durable, and quieter than regular turbines and can generate more energy from wind and water. Elephant trunks have over 40,000 muscles and are super agile. They can lift heavy loads and do complicated maneuvers, like picking apples from a branch. Trunk design inspired a super safe and flexible robotic arm. It has a memory and learns to reach and grab things from its own experience, like a human baby. This technology is already used in factories, labs, and hospitals. Another kind of robot, a squishy one, was modeled after an octopus. This robot doesn't move on a predictable trajectory like its hard-bodied friends. It can curl, shrink, and change into a new shape because it doesn't have fixed joints. It doesn't bump into things and adapts to any environment no problem. That's why it can be a great help in rescuing people. Bats get around thanks to echolocation. They produce ultrasonic sounds that bounce off things and then calculate the distance to those things. Scientists design a similar system to build into walking sticks for the visually impaired. It sends out 60,000 pulses every second and gets echoes. The stronger the echo, the closer the object is. Geckos are super climbers that can move on all kinds of surfaces, including walls, ceilings, and glass. The secret to their success is tons of microscopic hairs that give them a fantastic grip on any material. Scientists decided to use this knowledge for medical purposes and maybe to turn humans into spider humans in the future. The gripping material they designed is activated by UV light. Lobsters are delicious. They also have a unique vision. Their eye lenses are like flat mirrors that don't bend light but reflect it at many different angles. Scientists use this principle in building telescopes that can focus from different angles in space. A lobster's vision also inspired X-ray devices that can see even through a thick steel wall. Did I mention lobsters are delicious? Woodpeckers spend their days drumming on tree trunks, but their skulls and brains somehow stay safe and sound. That's because their beak and skull have many layers, and some parts of them are soft and absorb the shock. Scientists noticed this on CT scans of the birds' heads and used that knowledge to build a mechanical shock-absorbing system for micro-devices. They can also use it to make insulation material for spaceships and protect football players from injuries. Now, not all attempts at biomimicry are equally successful. In the late 1990s, Mercedes-Benz was looking for a new design idea of an aerodynamic, safe, efficient, and maneuverable car. They thought a boxfish would be a perfect role model. It resists the flow of water and stays on its course even in the rough sea. Well, what worked well in the sea didn't work out for a car. It turned out to be super unstable. Hey, it wasn't failure. They just learned one more way that it didn't work and went on to try the next thing. Hmm, good advice.